this call is listening. Hi guys, this is Mr. Clement at the uh, middle school. And today we are going to be looking through some of the virtual school stuff for the middle school. We are going to, in fact, call this a virtual academy um, parent middle school style. So I'm going to kind of work you through um, maybe on what this thing looks like in the digital world. Okay. So to go ahead and get us started, uh, we, uh, we hope we're able to meet you guys' needs for this year. Uh, we've worked a lot of long and hard hours. This is something that we started quite a while ago, and it is definitely something that uh, we have a lot of time in. We have a lot of teachers with a lot of time in this thing as well, and we have got them ready. Um, many of them come from backgrounds that uh, involve digital curriculum. Last year, we introduced the, uh, the NVA. Uh, six through 12, we had about 90 students that took part in that total. And uh, we took feedback from our parents uh, on what the goods were, what the bads were. Uh, we made a lot of adjustments and we went out and we said, what does the research tell us about how students are going to learn? So from that, we've made quite a few changes. Uh, at times, uh, our faculty has been put under uh, uh, a fire hydrant, if you will, to try to take a drink of water. And they have uh, they've come out of this thing stronger and better than ever. And it is an understatement to say that we have an absolutely amazing faculty. So I want to go ahead and get things uh, kicked off. One of the things that I seem to see uh, a lot online is questions about device. OK, so we have three basic options. So there is a school issued Chromebook that if you came up and picked that up, um, you have that. You may, you should have got a packet with that. We apologize. There were a few of you that may not have got that. Uh, you may have your own Chromebook. That's perfectly fine. And then the third option is you may have a Mac or a Windows laptop of your own. And that is, once again, perfectly fine. So if either one of those two first scenarios, if you follow the flow chart there, if either one of those first two scenarios arise, okay, you're going to be able to log into the instructions that begin on the next page. Uh, all things from the physical handout should work for you. I am going to show a little bit of that information again in just a few minutes. But if you have problems with that, please pause the video at any time and work through that. On the right side, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to need to download Chrome if you haven't already. That is Google Chrome. Uh, there are a couple ex extra steps that are going to be outlined for you later on. Is it possible to do this without Chrome? It is, but we like to believe in making things easy. Okay. So if you need to download that Chrome on your Mac or Windows laptop, go ahead and pause the video and do that now. All right. So the first thing we're going to look at is turning your device on. Uh, a vast majority of the Chromebooks that we checked out to middle school virtual students, um, those have a power button that is on the left side. And what you're going to do is you're actually going to touch that power button. It's a little bit tricky to find it. There are, uh, we do have some Chromebooks out there, but that power button is still on the top, so that's not a big deal. So if you're on your home network or basically any network, a login screen is going to pop up. But what you're going to want to do is you may have to minimize that and go back and log into your home network because your child has never logged on to that particular Chromebook. So uh, key number one in all of the connection issues uh, is make sure that you are connected to your home Wi-Fi. Uh, next up. Oh, first of all, I want to give credit to these amazing backgrounds to my wife who will be hosting the, uh, the Hubbard virtual night tomorrow with quite a few of these parents. So, uh, I have no real creativity in life. So I rely on, uh, my wife, um, Miss Standridge or with, uh, uh, you know, some of our teachers there at the middle school, Miss Kretzinger, uh, Miss Marcy, uh, Miss Young and some others. So, um, we the elementary so i know right now there's going to be some elementary parents that are going to be watching this seeing if they can pick up anything so if you are in fact logging in with the qr code this is a screen for you um, if you're using the qr code uh, after you get uh, logged into your home network or to a hotspot, you are going to uh, click the next screen and the camera is going to turn on then you're going to hold the qr code in the front of the camera okay uh, this will log your child into the device 
Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is probably not going to work um, on your uh, own personal device. You're more than welcome to try, but it's probably not going to work. This is a, uh, a very specific thing that was developed for from our technology department and how they worked their way through that over the summer is pretty much amazing. So you're going to need to do this each time you log on to your Chromebook. All right. So if you are logging in uh, to a non-district PC or Mac, okay? So this is your own personal laptop. After you've downloaded Chrome, you're going to open the browser. You're going to go to Google, okay? The website's on the screen there if you need it. Uh, if the browser does not take you there automatically. Um, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a blue button. It's called Sign In, okay? And you're going to need to go ahead and click that. Once you do that, you're going to be able to pick up directly with the rest of this PowerPoint. You can pause the video at this time if you need to do so. Using the login, okay? Your child's login is going to be their first middle, uh, first name, middle initial, and last name at nobleps.com. If you're on a district Chromebook, you don't need to put in that nobleps.com. It's going to come up automatically. Let's say your kid's name is Johnny Lynn Smith, all right? So that's going to be Johnny L. Smith at nobleps.com. What you're going to find out is even though you call your kid John and his name is Johnny, Whatever is on our school records is what you're going to need to put in. More than likely, your child has already logged in to their account uh, as we've been doing this at the middle school for multiple years. And all of our fifth grade stuff this last year required kids to log in under, these, under this sample situation. The child's password is going to be their six-digit birthday. For instance, if they are born December 15, 2004, obviously that's a little bit older than your kid, that password is going to be 12 15 04. You're going to need to do this each time you log in on your Chromebook. If you have an outside device, it's probably going to remember you, but that's just you. All right. So you can run into a few problems. If you were one of those people and you're like, all right, I wanted to put six hyphens in my kid's name. So my kid's name is Smith hyphen Jones hyphen whatever, 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 uh, Abbott. Okay. Whatever. Um, those are a little bit more complicated. So more than likely your kid already knows the complications of that. They know how to log in. If you don't have that, uh, shoot me a DM right below this video, uh, or shoot me a DM or comment below the video. And we will see if we can't work that out on a private type side. All right. Here's another example. If you need to pause the video at this point in time, go ahead and do that. This is just another example of that. All right. If you're having login problems. OK, uh, ask yourself a couple questions. Is your device connected to the Internet? Please make sure. Are you using the correct username? Again, uh, we've been seeing this quite a lot. Your kids are able to do this. So allow them to do that. Uh, and that could save you a lot of time. Are we using the correct password? So if we are coming up with the correct, if we're coming up with the password, the six digit, you're sure you're putting in that in right. There's a chance your kid has changed their password. If they have, we can correct that and we can come back through and reset the password. All right. So if these things have not worked out, okay, you can drop me uh, a DM uh, through Facebook Messenger or you can call us next week. So the first couple of days of the year, uh, our, our counselors are going to be busy uh, changing schedules for both some of our virtual students and our brick and mortar. So you might have to be a little bit patient with this, okay? All right, getting onto Chrome and Google Classroom, all right? So to get into Google Classroom, in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, whether you're on uh, a Chrome browser or whether you are in the Chrome browser provided inside of a Chromebook, you are going to see a little three by three array. This is sometimes called a waffle, sometimes called a hamburger. When you click on that, okay, that item is about right here. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse right there. And once you click it, you're gonna see something up at the top of that called Google Classroom. If your child is not logged in, Google Classroom is not going to appear. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through Google Classroom and our weekly schedule, all right? So most of our classes are set up in a weekly basis or based on topics. All right. So those newest information is generally going to go to the top, but it may be in sequential order. So let me go ahead and run you through what that would look like. All right. I'm going to hop into a see if I can unshare my screen. And then I'm going to go back and present from the other screen. 
So I have a tab right here that's going to give us um, some semblance of what a classroom is going to look like. All right. So uh, you guys are uh, you're going to be in a classroom that's going to look similar to this. This is actually the, the class that I am uh, coming out of right now. So this class has a class code. It's completely irrelevant to you. Uh, but this is where we get our class codes that we send you as a parent. OK, or as a student, you're going to see a few things at the top of this. You're going to see stream. This is where notifications are going to come through on your class. Your teachers may post uh, meeting links when they're going to have office hours or times that they're going to be there to help you. Or they may just be uh, links to the day's lectures if that is a teacher that live streams. So several of our crew, they do live stream. OK, and uh, this is kind of something that you're not going to find anywhere. But this is what research tells us is the best way to do things. And so we're going to bring that to the students at Noble Public Schools. So uh, there are meeting links. Um, not 100 percent sure whether some of our teachers are going to use Zoom or uh, uh, the Google Meet just yet. But we're going to work on that uh, and we're going to find what is going to be easiest for our kids to use. We're kind of keeping that open to make sure that we are kid friendly on this. So up top, there's something here that is called classwork, all right? So this is an example of where things are going to appear. This is my teacher side of this, but when your kids come in, they're going to see tabs here. Let's see if I can back up. Just going to go back to my classes list, and let me pop into a class that I am a student in. Um, I'm actually listed as a student in a class with Mr. Shortis. I'm going to show you what that looks like. All right. So as I begin uh, my information for whatever week I am or for whatever I need to do, it's going to start showing up in my Google Classroom. Should be Monday morning at 8 o'clock. All right. So in general, in general, middle school classes are going to populate assignments. OK, all these assignments are going to be added early on Monday morning, and they're going to be due at the end of the week sometime. This may be different um, depending on, depending on the teacher, the class and the subject area. Okay. So what I mean by that is some of those grades might be due on Friday. Some might be due on Saturday and some might be due on Sunday. Okay. That's just going to vary. A lot of our classes have questions. Okay. Where they may have a question that is kind of an open-ended question that asks your kid to write a little bit. Okay. Most of those, again, they're going to be assigned on Monday and you might need to work your way through all the material for that week before you're prepared to answer that question. Again, those are due at the end of the week. Some teachers have it where other kids can reply to that and some don't. That's really up to the teacher right there. All right. So again, on this screen that I'm working through, for instance, when I get ready to go in, I have no idea what this click is going to do for us. We're going to go in. Here's my first quiz that I'm going to take in this class. This might actually be uh, a pretest, okay, to kind of know what it is. All right. So if I want to come in here and be able to view the people, I'm able to view. This is a class that, again, Mr. Short has uh, started. Uh, we use this as just a demonstration class to teach from. All right. But hopefully everybody can see what our tabs do. All right. So let's go back to the stream, okay, this notification. So if I have the Google Classroom app as a parent installed on my phone, all right. And I may or may not even have to do that. OK, I just know that this way works um, when my teacher posts a new assignment for my child or when my child turns in an assignment or there's some major class notification. We can set that so you get the immediate email or the immediate notification, just like you got that uh, Facebook notification that you just got your one thousandth like on your favorite photo. OK, uh, it's going to come right out to you and you're going to be like, whoa, little Johnny, little Susie, they've got an assignment due in geography. All right. So um, there's going to be some times that perhaps those notifications might become a little overwhelming. I'm thinking it could be every Monday morning. Uh, but if you just want to scroll right on by that, you're perfectly able to. All right. So we're going to try to invite you guys as guardians. You can opt out of this anytime. Uh, you can turn notifications off if you want to. That's completely up to you. We just want you to know that that tool is readily available to you. All right. So, um, again, I'm going to look at this from one more little turn. Sorry, I have a little bit of problem with that camera right there. Um, I want to show you this screen. Let me go ahead and stop my screen share. 
And then I'm going to come back to another screen share real quick. And this screen share will be the last one that I'm going to show you. And I've pulled this up. This is a document that we created for you guys. And it includes the class codes. This was the physical copy. So where are you going to use these codes at? Okay. So again, these are the codes. Okay. Any student that we don't have enrolled after probably about two to three, maybe four days, um, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, probably automatically enroll you in those classes and then reach out and try to figure out uh, what, what kind of problems we're having. Okay. Uh, while I'm on that note, um, if you are a family that is needing a hotspot, um, those have been kind of stuck in transit uh, for everybody in the state. Uh, we've got those coming in. We're just, as soon as we can get those populated, we're going to get those out to you guys as soon as they're ready to go. Okay, so on this screen specifically, okay, all I need to do is I'm going to go in and my sixth grade classes, if I have a sixth grader and they are a normal sixth grader, they don't have any uh, crazy advanced classes or they're not, uh, you know, taking high school credit work or maybe um, just in general. OK, your class code is going to be right here. These class codes could change if uh, your child receives special services um, from our special ed department uh, again or if they are um, enrolled in special classes. OK, uh, for instance, our maybe our eighth grade over here, our eighth grade science kids. Uh, this is actually their class website and their deal and their uh, class code for Google Classroom. But if they are enrolled in physical science, they're going to have this code right here. OK, um, some of our advanced math classes, if you're a sixth grader with an advanced math class, all you're going to do is bump over here to seventh grade and use that math code. If you're an, uh, a seventh grade in advanced, you're going to bump over to eighth grade math. If you are an eighth grader and you need advanced math, you're going to use the class code for algebra one. All right. So I have one more thing that I want to show you. I want to make sure everybody understands how to put those class codes in. OK, so let me get this final screen set up. And then uh, again, as we as we look to switch screens here. As we look to move forward here, if you have questions, please, uh, the most organized way for me to be able to answer your questions, I have to be able to see them. So if you will, I've actually had three uh, people DM me while I'm making this recording. So if you have questions, please do not be afraid to go on the Facebooks. And uh, I'm not on the Twitter or any of those things right now. Uh, but if you can go on there and get with me. Uh, or uh, if you send a comment to this video on one of the local Facebook pages. Um, we can probably get out to you. Uh, some of these issues, we're going to try to, you know, keep the confidentiality of your family. And so it's just easier for us to do that on that side. OK, um, so the last thing that I want to show you is this tab right here. And I've got a few I've got a few classes here and what it, what goes on with all of these things. OK, yours won't look like this when you populate it. But when you get ready to add those class codes, OK. You're going to go right here and you're going to go to join class. OK, once you click this, it's going to give you an option of what you want your class code to be right here. This is where you're going to put on those class codes. So if you're just now seeing this and you're like, all right, what was my class code again? I want you to go down to the bottom, rewind the video a little bit, find your class codes, write them down and then come forward and do this. And you should be good to go. Again, if you have any questions on this uh, over the next few days, so forth like that, definitely. What we need you to do is we need to know what your questions are and how we can help you. Our teachers are prepared. Um, your kids are probably your kids are ready to get going. Our kids, we know our kids that are ready to come back into school. They are ready. They are ready to play sports. Those of them that play sports, they're ready to be back in band. And our teachers are so waiting to get these kids back in the classroom. Um, so we really appreciate your time. We hope that uh, this has been helpful. And I'm going to sign off if you need help. You literally just comment in the chat or uh, send me a DM and we will see if we can. So from the middle school, we are over and out.